On this video we're taking a look at our MLB team and total picks for the games that are happening on Saturday, April 9th, 2022. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Five plans are available for each and every one of you, you can get 30 extra betting picks all the way up to 500 extra betting picks per month. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting picks that ends up costing you a lot of money. Join the high stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. San Francisco Giants vs Miami Marlins. Our first pick is. Marlins for the win and here is why. The Miami Marlins nearly spoiled the home opener of the Giants before falling in the 10th inning. For 6 innings, it appeared the Marlins would be unable to solve the Giants' ace Logan Webb. They trailed 3-0 through 6 innings, before finally getting Webb out of the game with a Joey Wendell walk with one out in the 7th. Catcher Jacob Stallings, who went 2 for 4 with 3 RBI, homered to cut the lead to 3-2 off of reliever Dominic Leon. Stallings would single in a run in the 9th as well, following a 2-run blast by Jazz Chisholm Jr. The lead would not hold, however, as Anthony Bender gave up a game-tying home run in the ninth inning for a blown save. In the 10th, Austin Bass allowed a two-out double to incur the loss in the walk-off win for the Giants. The outcome was cruelly similar to the Marlins' 2021 season. Last season, Miami had 29 one-run losses which tied for the most in franchise history. After winning a franchise record 107 games in 2021, the season became a bit of a disappointment with a divisional round loss to Los Angeles in five games. In the offseason the Giants saw the departure of longtime all-star catcher Buster Posey to retirement and lost starting pitcher Kevin Gossman to free agency. The team added Carlos Rodin, today's starting pitcher, and resigned key veterans including 11-year Giants Brandon Belt and Brandon Crawford. Logan Webb made his first career opening day start and looked the part of an ace in shutting down the Marlins for six full innings before departing after a walk with one out in the seventh. While he didn't figure in the decision, the no decision meant that Webb has now not lost a game since May 5th of last year. Rookie catcher Joey Bart, charged with replacing the Giants legend Posey, drilled his first home run in the major leagues in the win. The Marlins are a sneaky good play in Game 2 versus the Giants. SF's bullpen did not look particularly strong in Game 1, and they will most assuredly be used heavily in Game 2, as the Giants carefully work Roden back up to strength. Lopez has a chance for a breakout season this year and fared well against the Giants last year, allowing just one unearned run. In 2021, everything seemed to go right for the Giants, while the Marlins seemed to struggle in similar circumstances. Game 1 was almost a repeat of the 2021 season for both teams. Baseball, more so than other sports, is ruled by the law of averages. The Giants had an incredible season in 2021, but, in truth, far too much went right for that to happen. The Marlins struggled but, the large number of one-run losses is against a norm. I expect the Marlins to come out in Game 2 and hang in a tight game until this turns into a battle of the bullpens. I like the Marlins' luck to turn around to take Game 2. And our second pick is. Over 7.5 and here is why. The Miami Marlins blew their opener after tying things up late and even having a lead in the bottom of the ninth inning. The Marlins' relief pitching let them down in their opener. The Marlins hoped to avoid 0-2 starts for the third time in the last four years. Jacob Stallings leads the Marlins with two hits and three RBI, while Jazz Chisholm Jr. and Jesus Aguilar have combined for three hits and two RBI. Pablo Lopez gets the ball, and he was 5-5 with a 3.07 ERA and 115 strikeouts last season. Lopez is 0-2 with a 0.90 ERA and 37 strikeouts in his career against the Giants. Both offenses started to heat up late in their opener, and that should carry over here. As talented as Pablo Lopez is, his road ERA was 4.34, which is two full runs worse than what he was at home. Carlos Rodin was terrific last season with the White Sox, but he had serious struggles in previous years, with ERAs and whips off the charts. I expect some runs in this contest. Give me the over the reasonable total. Philadelphia Phillies vs Oakland Athletics. Our first pick is. Philadelphia, minus 1.5, and here is why. Even after finishing last season with an 86-76 record and in third place in the Al West, the Athletics made quite a few changes in the offseason and quickly looked to be one of the worst teams in Major League Baseball. The opener saw a tough start, and while the bullpen was able to limit the damage, they couldn't get outs when it mattered either. Oakland gave up runs in five of eight innings, and after using three bullpen arms on Friday, could be spread a little thin in this one. Staying on the road presents its own challenges for this team, and the Athletics will have their work cut out for them in this one. 
Philadelphia's lineup looks like it could be one of the most dangerous in the NL East, and after a quick start on Friday, followed by consistency though, the Phillies like their chances to grab the season sweep. Probably the most impressive part of Philadelphia's performance was their bullpen, hanging on through some solid innings, and it's clear that'll be a strength of this group. Philadelphia actually finished with a worse record than Oakland last year, ending up 82-80, and finishing 6.5 games out of first place in the NL East. Being able to bring back a solid amount of their core group is crucial to their success this season though, and will be on full display on Saturday. The Phillies will come away with another win on Saturday, and building off of their confidence and momentum from Friday will be crucial. The Phillies have one of the deepest lineups in baseball, and Friday was an indication that there wouldn't be much rust to shake off when the season kicked off. Between Schwarber, Castellanos, Harper, and a host of others, Philadelphia won't have any issues finding runs in this one. The Phillies have their own strengths in slowing down Oakland, which is predicted to be one of baseball's worst teams. Additionally, according to Covers.com, the Phillies are 4-0 in their last four home games, when the total is set between 7 and 8.5. And our second pick is over 9 and here is why. The Oakland A's will look to bounce back from a 9-5 loss to the Phillies in Friday's season opener. Seth Brown led the way for Oakland in defeat with a three-run home run, while Chad Pinder went two for four with a solo home run. Sean Murphy added a double, while Tony Kemp and Christian Patch each had a base hit, as well as the A's cranked out just six hits as a team in the loss. Frankie Montes took the loss on the mound after allowing five earned runs on six hits, while striking out six over five innings of work. Cole Irvin will start here and was 10-15 with a 4.24 ERA and 125 strikeouts last season. I'm not eager to go either way here, as I'm really expecting the A's to falter this season and to struggle, but I'm also not looking to lay heavy juice with Kyle Gibson who has his moments, but is also prone to getting batted around in his career. I think this is another game where the runs come up in bunches again. Give me the over once again here. New York Yankees vs Boston Red Sox. Boston Red Sox for the win, and here is why. The Boston Red Sox went 92-70 during the 2021 regular season. The Red Sox then defeated the Yankees 6-2 in the wild card game, before also eliminating Tampa Bay three games to one in the divisional series. Boston's season ended in the Alks in six games to the Houston Astros. Last season, New York won 92 games and was eliminated by Boston in the one-game wild card. For this season, the Yankees' over-under win total is set at 91.5, and they have the second-best odds to win the AL East behind Toronto at plus 190. New York's odds to win the American League pennant are plus 550. In the Friday Game 1, Boston scored three quick runs for an early lead. The Sox let the Yankees back in it down the stretch and ultimately lost 6-5 in 11 innings. Boston's Nathan Eovaldi lasted 5.0 frames with three earned runs on five hits and a walk. Over on the Yankees' side, they were able to get a couple of runs back early on Friday, then steadily worked their way back. Josh Donaldson hit a walk-off single to take the first win of the year. Jerry Cole started the game, posting an uneven day on 4.0 innings, 3 earned, 4 hits, 1 walk and 3 KS. Starting pitcher in the Saturday game for New York will be Luis Severino. Last year Severino didn't play much due to injury. He appeared in just 4 games, posting a 1-0 record with a clean ERA and 8 KS in 6.0 innings. Severino holds a 3.43 career mark in ERA, with 597 KS, in 536.0 innings. And our second pick is over 9.5. And here is why. The Boston Red Sox surprised a lot of people by making it to the Alps last season, as it was viewed as a potential year to recalibrate things with Alex Cora back as their manager. A huge reason for their success was the fact that the offense dominated as they were third in baseball with a .777 ops and were able to take pressure off their pitchers by scoring 5.12 runs per game. They decided to increase the offensive firepower in their lineup during the offseason by signing free agent Trevor Story to play second base for them. However, when he was not in Colorado last season, Story struggled as he had a .717 ops with 13 homers and 28 RBI. If you look at it with a glass half full, a quarter of his hits on the road went over the wall, as he had 52 hits over 256 at-bats. If Story can provide that power stroke to the lineup, it will be a huge addition to an already stacked lineup. The New York Yankees definitely improved their offense from a year ago, as they added former Al MVP Josh Donaldson, first baseman Anthony Rizzo, outfielder Joey Gallo, and shortstop Isaiah Kiner Falifa to the team for the entire 162-game season. The offense had three home runs in the first game of the season, as DJ LeMahieu, Giancarlo Stanton, and Anthony Rizzo all hit home runs off Boston. The Yankees were an average offensive team in 2021, as they had a .729 ops as a team and averaged 4.39 runs per game, which is not where the Bronx Bombers are used to. 
The talk around the Yankees is the fact that they were unable to come to a contract extension with right fielder Aaron Judge, but he has been an incredible hitter in the month of April, as last season he had a .272 batting average with 7 home runs and 15 RBI throughout the month. If he can continue to be a force towards the top of the lineup every day, it makes the New York Yankees that much tougher of a lineup to face off against. Disclaimer, no financial advice, the information on this channel is provided for education and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information contained in or provided from or through this channel is not intended to be and does not constitute financial advice, investment advice, trading advice or any other advice. The information on this channel and provided from or through this channel is general in nature and is not specific to you the user or anyone else. You should not make any decision, financial, investment, trading or otherwise, based on any of the information presented on this channel without undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or financial advisory.